Wow. In today's CAD versus CAD tournament, I already knew that uh, plasticity was going to be an underdog, but today really highlighted some of the disadvantages of plasticity compared to other CAD tools. And I guess that will be the topic of today, which is, you know, how do we deal with some of these tricky angle situations in plasticity? But kind of summarizing what happened in the tournament, one of the things that Phosphor said is that he kind of fumbled and messed up in angles. And I really felt bad because I too run into these issues with just angles in general in plasticity. And it really just stems from the fact that, you know, getting the correct angle in plasticity is tricky because it is due to the fact that it's not like your traditional CAD tools. There's no dimensioning, you know, given an angle, you just kind of have to build the part with the correct angle. And to really illustrate that in this video, I'm going to use one of Tool Tall Toby's practice models on the website. I'm not going to give away the full solution, of course. I'm just going to give parts of it where, you know, it deals with some tricky angles. So let's jump into plasticity and, and let's get started. So here I'm going to show on the screen over here in the corner the, the kind of side profile of the part that we're trying to model. But essentially we are given, you know, three things, right? We're given a base here that has a specific length and then we're given the two sides that's angled upwards and the two sides have a specific angle between them. So, okay, let's imagine how we would do that. So we're given a base. Let's put in that base first. So here we're working with in inches. So I'm going to first switch over to inches. Let's draw on that base really quickly. It's going to be 2.625 inches and we're going to make sure that's centered along the origin. And then the next thing you would do is to draw in the sides, right? So how would you do that in an actual, you know, traditional CAD program? You would go about it, you know, something like this. You would just draw in one line over here, draw in another line over here. They don't even need to be the same length, but then you just take your dimension tool and then you click, Hey, this line and this line, there needs to be a 14 degree angle between them. And that's it. You're done. Right. That's that's how you do it in your in your other CAD tools. But in but again, in plasticity, there's no dimension tool. So we just kind of have to get the angle correct. So like, how do we do that? OK, well, let's draw a line. Can we just press tab, tab and enter in 14? No, because this angle is is relative to the horizontal position or the zero degree position. So 14 is not correct. And then we, we and intuitively it doesn't make sense to enter in 14. Right. Um, so what do we do? Like, is it, we know that it's between two angles. Like, so is it like 14 divided by two? Is it like seven degrees? And again, we can't just enter seven degrees here because that's also the wrong, wrong thing. So then really we have to think like, well, how do we actually get 14 degrees then? Right. It goes back to like now, oh man, man, trigonometry. We haven't done that in a while. Right. That's back in elementary school, but we have to kind of fall back to that in order to really, and again, like, it's not to say that trigonometry is the, the trig here is hard. It's just that it's just an additional mental uh, obstacle that plasticity users will have to deal with versus other CAD tools, right? So here, how would, you, how would you deal with this? Well, you have to think about that. We're really drawing, and I'm just going to use this as an example. Really, there's a triangle, right? And a triangle, and it's this angle over here that is 14 degrees apart. And, and since this part is symmetrical, then we really want to just think about dealing with half, then it means that this angle here is seven degrees. Okay. We, we already knew that, like 14 divided by 2, 7, like intuitively we know that has to do with something to do with 7 degrees. But we know that we can't just enter 7 degrees, which then goes back to, again, 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 more trigonometry. If we divide this triangle in half, so which we talked about before, we got to think about one of the rules in uh, for triangles, and it's the fact that the sum of all the angles in a triangle must add up to 180. And again, we learned this in elementary school. I'm not saying it's hard. I'm just saying it's just something you have to think about. So we know that if this is a right angle, right triangle, this is a right angle here. So this is 90 degrees. We've just established that this is seven degrees up here, which means that this angle, which is the one we actually want to input when we're pressing tab tab on a, on the line tool to enter in the angle, this needs to be 90 minus seven. So that's, that, that's kind of the mental hurdle that we have to go through. Like we have to think about like, oh, okay, so it's 14 degrees, but really it's seven degrees, but then really it's tab, tab, 90 minus seven. And that's how we get that angle. So let's just build that. So now, now this line is correct. We can mirror that onto the other side and that's done. Okay, let's move on. So that's just one example of a disadvantage of plasticity with regards to angles. Let's move, let's continue building the part. Uh, we know that we have to draw this uh, kind of curve up here on the part. We know that the height of this part is uh, four inches is the is the top of the part. So I'm just going to draw a line in the bottom on the x-axis from our base. Uh, press G for move, Z to uh, move in the Z direction, and just enter enter up four inches. Okay, and I'm going to trim away the rest of the part. Okay, so how would we actually do this in other CAD software? Well, we would just simply just create a circle of some sort, right? 
uh, here's a circle. It doesn't even have to be, you know, it can just be anywhere. But then we take our tangent constraint and we just say, hey, this circle needs to be tangent to this, you know, left edge. This circle needs to be tangent to this top edge. This circle needs to be tangent to the right edge. And then suddenly, and then magically, the circle is in the correct spot. The height is still, you know, four inches as, as, as its peak. Everything's all fine and dandy. But again, there's no dimensioning in plasticity. So what do we do then? So the closest tool that we have is this tangent circle tool. So I'm just going to open up the tangent circle and it tells us to select our first curve segment, second curve segment. And that's pretty much it though. Like that's all it gives us. Like there's no way for us to specify this, this top point. And I, I, I've tried, you know, moving my mouse in different ways to try to get it to flip around. And there's no way to do that at all. But it, all it gives us is a radius. So really, I think like maybe this is a, you know, a feature request from plasticity, could it give us some tools to maybe flip the circle or instead of a radius, give us a way to specify a, a third point of tangency. But so far the tangent circle, that's not the tool. So we can't do that. So then what do we do then if we can't use the tangent circle tool? So again, this is like one of those things, plasticity users, we're gonna, we, we gotta be trig masters in order to, to do these parts, right? So again, if we, if we extend this and I'm just gonna draw this like this, if we extend, if we extend this triangle fully, you got to remember, like, how do we establish a circle that is tangent to these two lines? And if you did do a little bit of digging, if you think about it, what it will tell you is that, well, first we got, you know, it is a triangle here that we're dealing with, but really we want to get the angle bisector of this triangle. So for here, since it's right along the origin, that angle bisector for this top angle over here, it's right down the Y axis, right? And once you get that angle, that line that represents that angle bisector, then as long as you create a circle where the center of the circle is on this line, then it intersects, you know, just anywhere. It will be tangent with these two lines. So I can draw a circle. If I use the center circle tool and I just draw anywhere where the center point is on this line, I can get the circle to be tangent to these two lines. But we already have that. Like that that's what the tangent circle tool does. Like it gives, it, it basically gives us this. So, okay. So, so, that's all, so this is only part of the solution. We're able to get this get as far as what the built-in tool gets us now. So then how do we get the, the third line to be tangent? And if you do a little bit of research, but then you soon you realize that we then need the, basically we need to uh, get the angle bisector from these two lines. And because it's symmetrical, we can just get it from one of these lines. So like, let's imagine this is the, the angle bisector for, for the top, the, this horizontal line and this angled line. Let's just imagine this is it. Then since it's symmetrical, it's just from the other side, it'll just be mirrored, right? But it's basically the intersection between all of these bisector lines, that would be the midpoint for our circle. So again, that's just another additional thing that plasticity users need to need to think about. Okay, great. We need we need to know the angle bisector. Okay, does plasticity give you, hey, it knows that, you know, it, it's it's pretty smart, right? It's like the, the snap system's not that bad. Like it, you know, if if we're given a line and we draw another line from it, it knows that, hey, look at this pink edge that it gives us, right? It knows how to, it knows that, hey, this line, it, 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 it gives us the perpendicular line to this, to this first line that I'm drawing off of, right? So it has some intelligence to it. So maybe, maybe it gives us the, the angle bisector too, but unfortunately not. I'm just moving my mouse over. There's no convenient snaps. That's the angle bisector. Since it doesn't give us, give us the angle bisector, then what do, what do we do? We just need to calculate it by hand. Right? We already know, like we already went through all this effort to say like, hey, we already know, like we know that these two lines are 14 degrees apart. So we know that if we, if we just draw a similar triangle, like if we just draw a straight line down here, we know that this angle over here is, is seven degrees. We've established that from before. And we know that this is a right, right angle. And again, this is not hard math, right? It's just, it's just like, it's, but it's just things that we have to think about. Like we know that this is 90 degrees, this is seven degrees. Then that means that the angle between this horizontal line and this first line over here must be 97 degrees, like 90 plus seven. But it's just things that we have to think about. So, so then we think, okay, well, I mean, this shouldn't be that difficult. Like, is there some, some way for the UI to give us the indicator? Well, I mean, I'm going to go on a tangent over here. Uh, get it? A tangent? Okay. But if we just draw a line, notice, uh, let's, let's just look at the UI first. If we just draw a line and we just draw off to upwards and to the right, the angle that, is, that it presents us is pretty standard, right? We know that, you know, a flat line over here would be zero degrees. And as we move counterclockwise, the angle increases. Uh, but, but once we cross that 180 boundary, this is where it's interesting. I guess it's not really interesting, but this is how this tool works. It doesn't give us, you know, 225 uh, and, and so on and so forth. It gives us the, the degree relative to it moving in the clockwise direction, relative to the zero degree position, right? 
But, you know, that's just how the tool works, and, but that's actually what we want. So the point I'm trying to say is, here is that even the direction that you draw the line in kind of matters. Because here we're trying to find the angle between this horizontal line and this, this line down here. And if we just draw it downwards and we know that it calculates the angle in the clockwise fashion, and that's actually what we want. See so here you, again, you get that 97 degrees. So, so that's useful to us. That's useful for, for us to know because we know that the angle bisector must be 97 divided by two. So if we just draw the line down here. And it, 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 again, you can already see that it's 97 degrees. Press tab, tab. But we know the angle bisector is, you know, we're dividing this angle by two. So just enter divide by two and just move your mouse over. And now it gives us the angle bisector relative to these two lines. So it's kind of useful to know that the direction in which you draw the line matters. Okay. So now that we have this angle bisector, we can now draw a, using the center circle tool, just pick the point that's the intersection of both of these lines, draw it upwards until it reaches that top point. And now we have a circle that is tangent to all three of these lines. But again, not hard, but just additional things that plasticity users have to deal with. Now, the last example I want to go over is actually during the model that uh, Phosphor himself struggled in. And it's, it's just very easy to get the angles incorrect in, in, in plasticity. So I'm going to put up the model over here that was going through in the competition. But here it, uh, in the drawing, it gives us this 30 degree angle. So let's just kind of do that in plasticity. If I draw a line, so right now, if I go up and to the right, and if I want a 30 degree angle, what do I do? Well, it's simple. I just press tab, tab, and enter 30, right? Because it's relative to this, to the zero position going uh, counterclockwise. That makes sense. But in, 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 the, in the drawing for Phosphor's model, we needed a 30 degree angle relative to the horizontal position, but from the left side. So how do we do that? Right? I mean, again, it's not, it's not difficult math. We know that, you know, flat is 180, 180 minus 30 would be the angle that we want. So really the angle that he needed is 150. But again, like, do we really need to do this mental exercise? Like if we had a dimension tool, we'd say, Hey, relative to horizontal, click on this, click on this line, give me 30 degrees. Right? But here's the thing. So here's the rule of thumb. If I press tab, tab right now, and I, and I know it's going to be hundred something more than 90 degrees, right? If I have, if I'm doing the speed modeling, I know that it's not, it's not vertical. It's, it's greater than 90 degrees. It's going to be over 90 degrees. Um, but if I press tab, tab, I don't know what the actual angle is. I know that I want a 30 degree angle relative to horizontal, but rel but from the left side, what happens if I just enter 30, if I press in 30, what, what's, what's the expected behavior? Notice how it's actually locked me into this position in this angle. But wait a minute, this is not 30 degrees. Clearly, it's clearly even you can see that there's a faint outline of the arc, right? It's more than 90 degrees. Like, how is this correct? But if I just press tab and then just drag outwards, notice how it's like I inputted 30, but it then actually corrected me to 150. So like the software is just weird, man. Like it knows what, what I need to do. Like it knows I need 30 in this instance. So the rule of thumb here is that, okay, if we know that we're drawing an angle that is that and that angle is given to us that's relative to a horizontal position so like so like so like here it's the zero degree over here or on the other side if that angle is given to us relative to the horizontal position just enter that angle and i think what phosphor stumbled on is like you know it's like all these edge cases like do we need to divide the angle by two is it like uh, do we need to do 180 minus some angle? Do we need to subtract it? Because, you know, again, there's no dimensioning in plasticity. So I think that's what he suffered, but that's kind of what I want to go over. Here's the rule of thumb that I've, I've established uh, after playing around with the software. If it's relative to horizontal, just enter in the angle and you'll be fine. Right? 30 degree works this way. If I go from the other direction, tab, tab, 30 degrees works the other way as well. So that's that. All I, that's all I got for you. Um, you know, uh, leave a comment if this helped you, uh, but as always, see you in the next video. Bye now.